Are we on now? Yeah. Thanks. All right, so welcome to Tuesday, March 21st. If you could please get out your notebooks and write down your daily capture question, I'd greatly appreciate it. Today's capture question is based on air pressure, and we talked a little bit about that yesterday. It says, what is the difference between high and low air pressure? Our content objective is going to be the same all week, so I'm not going to go over that again. Today, we're going to do our capture question. I want to remind you, if you've not handed in your sphere interaction paper yet, I would like to get that from you. And we're going to do our weather collection for the day. We're going to gently touch on elements of weather stations, which we did yesterday. And then we're going to do some air demos. Girls, do you have passes? No. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be quiet for a minute, a minute and a half, so that you have time to get out your things, write down the daily question. Please put your new handout in your table of contents. Again, at this point, you decide how you want to organize that. And I will put this in one minute. Uh, one minute and 20 seconds. Don't forget today's not a Liberty Day, today's an advisory day. Did you all do your can thing yet? Your can sculptures? When do you do that? Next week? Don't forget to get those cans in. It's good. All right, four, three, two, one, and we are done. Do, 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 do. Could you please turn with your parachute partners and try to tell what is the difference between high and low air pressure? Your time starts now. Go. Gotta keep me in focus. Low pressure, high, low pressure, high pressure. Which one do we want to go with first? Drop your phones. Which one do we want to go? High pressure. Okay. What's the difference? Well, then what is high pressure? High pressure, what's happening with the air? Colder. Okay, it could be colder. So with high pressure, it could be a colder air mass. Okay, or cooler. Then the surrounding air. What's happening then? Is what? The air is pressing down. The air is pressing down. Okay. The air is pressing down on us. Okay. Basically, it's falling. So that air is colder, which means what about density? Ah, yes! It's a higher density. Higher density than the surrounding area. So we've got this column of air that's cooler. That means that that air is contracting. It's falling down. So if you're underneath it, you're going to experience this higher pressure. Now, can we actually feel it? 
Some people, if they're very sensitive, they do get affected by high and low pressure. Sometimes you can get headaches or whatnot, right? Sometimes your arthritis feels weird, um, but it's not like it's gonna be crushing you, like, oh my God, Sorry. That, they're not like that. But imagine, has anybody ever um, heard of anybody getting the bends in deep sea fishing or deep sea diving? Okay, deep sea diving, if you're all the way under in the ocean, imagine the amount of air that's pressing down on you and then the water that's pressing down on you as well, right? So you've got all of this pressure. And if you come up from the bottom, well, no one's going to go to the bottom of the ocean, but if you come up too quickly, you could get what's called the bends, which means that your, um, your oxygen in your blood, right, is going to kind of like bubble out almost. And so you've got to very go, go very slowly up so that you don't get that uh, very painful, um, painful process. So if that's high pressure, what's low pressure? Everybody look at this. With your pair share partners, turn and talk. Based on this being high pressure, you've got five seconds to talk about low pressure. Ready, set, go. Two, one, and done. Ha, 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 ha. Jaren, what's low pressure all about? Um, Just take this and give me the opposite. Warmer. Okay, so the air column in that area is going to be warmer than the surrounding air. So then what's going to happen? Um, air is it's going to be pressing down or rising up? Rising up. Right, the air is rising up. The air is rising, I guess, off of us. Okay, um, yeah, rising off of us, which means what about the density is happening? Lower density. Yeah, we've got a lower density. So as it's warming up, those air molecules are like going really fast, expanding out in volume, which means that they're rising up. Now, air always, always, always moves from what to what? Yeah, it always goes, always, write this down, always from high to low pressure. Always, always moves, I'll say air, air always moves, I'll say moves, from high pressure to low pressure, always. High low, high low, it's off to the wind we go. Ba -dum -bum 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 -bum. Which way will it blow? From high to low, the wind will blow. <sighs> From high to low pressure. It's just the same way if somebody came in with some really stanky, like, cologne, and it's very concentrated, there's a high amount of cologne in this area. Eventually, who's gonna, well, Jose's gonna uh, smell it first. And then after a while, it's going to get all the way over to Allie, right? Because it's moving from high areas of, like, concentration to low areas of concentration. All right. I like it. How do we feel about that? Good? I feel great, Addie. Um, anybody got a sphere interaction paper? Let's get that handed in to me. I'm going to go ahead and turn your sphere interaction papers back to you, my sweet baboos. So what I'm going to do is hand these back. Great job. If you don't get one from me, it just means that I haven't gotten one from you yet. But please note that I would love to get one from you. Could you hand that back to Rebecca? Um, and if you have questions or if you're unhappy with your grade, go ahead. Could you hand that back to Yuma? Go ahead and talk to me after class, but not right now. We don't have time. Could you hand that back to Colin? And then Aileen, unfortunately, is not here. Could you hand that down to Jose? Cooper, Cooper, Cooper. Could you hand that back all the way to Cooper? Could you hand that down to Jaren for me, please? Ouch, that stuff in my finger. Could you please hand that back to Ramon? And could you hand that right back to Kaylin? And there you go, Zai. And could you hand that back to Ethan? And could you hand that back also to Alexis? And then could you hand that all the way back to Kendall, please? And then could you hand that down to Claire? Uh, Brayden, where are ya? There you go. Could you hand that back to Brayden, please? And then could you hand that to Addie? <laughs> could you hand that back and then over to Billy down there? And then could you hand that all the way back to Kendall and then over to Allie? And then could you do the same thing with William? That goes to William. 
And then Karen, could you hand that all the way back to Karen, please? Could you hand that back down or over to Hudson, please? Could you hand that to Alex, please? Could you hand that back to George, please? Could you hand that back to Sam, please? Maya. person it just means that you've not printed it out and given it to me yet please make sure you do that as soon as possible so that I can go ahead and get your grade amended let's go ahead and get our weather collection out for the day please let's go ahead and see what the weather is like that's a nice job on that just copy the All right, let's go ahead and get this. AccuWeather in North Liberty. Can you see it now? No, you can't. I'm so sorry. All right. Remodeling your bathroom? No. What? I literally helped you. It's 60. Literally. Um, here's something else that I want to go ahead and show you real quick because I want you to see all of my... But I want to make you aware of this. So um, the black, um, what is the BLSU for? Oh, bad, Black Latino Student Union um, is selling t-shirts and sweatshirts and they're really cool. So I want to get one and this is what the back looks like. You guys don't have the back. The back part. Oh, okay. So that's the bag. I think it is so cool. And I just want to go ahead and promote that because it's a really nice way of them raising money. And they did a lot of work. And I believe that you worked for the, um, you worked with the Humanizing Hoodie guy, right? And what's his name again? Andre. Yes, Andre. I want to say Andre Wright, but I think that's wrong. Andre. It is right, Andre Wright. Um, so yeah, they worked really hard to design this and get the production, and so great job. And it's a really cool hoodie. So the t-shirts are $20, and the hoodies are 30, and if you enter a certain code, which you can see some, you've got your, um, I believe, ordering sheets around the building, and there's a code on there that you can get free shipping. Isn't that right? Yeah, so you can get free shipping too. So anyway, I just wanna say, um, that's really cool. It'd be really awesome if we could see lots of those around. So here we go, let's look at what it is today. The first thing, what's our first that we need to fill in? Do I have to go through these with you or can you find them? Do you have this? Air pressure, okay, so air pressure is 30.09. What's the second one? Temperature, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Warmer or colder than yesterday? Warmer for this time, right? It got to be, I think, almost 60 yesterday, but at this time. What's the next one? Wind is coming from the south, southeast at six miles per hour. What's the next one? Humidity, 53%. Ooh, cloud cover. It says it's 100%. That means I look at the sky and I see absolutely no what? Yeah, no blue sky. It's all clouds. 100% cover. What's the forecast today? Cloudy. cloudy, but not rainy. So that's good. It's just going to be cloudy. It's raining. It's raining? Oh. No, it's supposed to rain. It's supposed to rain? Not for right now, though. Are we good on here? Great. Let's go ahead then very quickly and look at this. Um, this was what we did yesterday. We went through all of these, and I know, Billy, you weren't here yesterday, darling. We went around to all of the different stations and learned about these. I'm going to go really, really quickly through them, but I don't want to spend too much time because um, we already went through it. All right, so the first one I want to go through is air temperature. Air temperature is a measure of how hot or cold the atmosphere is. Um, with this thermometer, it's important to be able to read a thermometer and to know the gradations of them, the degrees. 
So if this is zero, this long um, line, and this long line is 20, what does that mean this short line in between is? 10. So this one goes up by 10. 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, oh, 50. It's important first to establish what that is. Does anybody know how a thermometer works? Mm -hmm. It's all, yeah. It used to be mercury, but now it's used with other fluids. It is. And it's basically, uh, well, an old school thermometer is when uh, basically it gets heated up and it expands. Yeah, what expands? The fluid. The fluid. So if I put my hand on here, I'm adding heat into this fluid. This fluid is just like red alcohol, right? So it doesn't freeze. But I'm heating up this fluid. What's the molecule action in there if I add energy into them? Are they just kind of hanging out like this? No, they're getting like really excited. And they're bumping into each other. And as they bump into each other, they spread out. And as they spread out, the volume increases and so this thing goes up. Now, if we take energy out of this because it's cold, right? Energy is always going to flow from high energy to low energy. If there's more energy in here and it's colder out here, the energy will leave this bulb, which means that those molecules are going to start kind of getting quiet. And that means the volume is going to contract and this is going to go down. That's all how a thermometer works. All right, why is it important to understand air temperature? Before a storm, temperature usually drops. You get a, a cold front that comes in, and we know that a storm is going to be coming. The thermometer can also tell us also what kind of precipitation. If it's above freezing, it's going to rain. Bless you. And if it's below freezing, you're going to get snow, sleet, or hail. Air pressure. Oops, back up. Air pressure is a weight of a column of air. So when we were talking here about air, it's kind of the same thing. So imagine air is falling down on top of you. It's pressing down, right? That is going to be what kind of pressure? Yeah, that's going to be um, high pressure. When the air pressure on the barometer rises, meaning the number goes higher, that means we're going to have clear, fair weather. Higher numbers means you feel higher and happy and like, yes, it's a clear, sunny day. Isn't this nice? But when that number drops and we get low pressure, that means that I feel low and lousy because it's rainy weather or storms are coming. Okay? Wind. That is just a movement of um, air. And it goes from high to low pressure. Why is it important? Before storms, often the wind speed and direction changes. Sometimes if you have one of these things and you go outside and you look at it and it's going that means the storms are coming, right? Does anybody have one of those? Gosh, I want one so bad. We have a shed in the back and I keep telling my husband, we need a weather vane. He's like, we're not on the farm. So we don't have to be. Let's just get one. Anybody taking a welding class this summer? We should, we should teach welding here. I think that would be so great. Mr. Casper is not really into metal working, though. He's pretty much like he likes wood. He's a wood guy. Not that kind of wood. Smart ass. Exactly. Um, humidity. The amount of water vapor in a given amount of air. We're going to be using a um, psychrometer in a couple of days to measure the amount of relative humidity in the air. Why is it important? It's a factor involved in cloud formation and precipitation. If the air is really dry, we're not going to get clouds. And if we don't get clouds, we're probably not going to have any storms. And, you know, your clothes are going to dry really quickly on the clothesline. Precipitation, we have a rain gauge. Dew point, the temperature at which the humidity reaches 100% and dew forms. What's dew? What is it? How could you explain dew to somebody? What's dew? If I touch this table and dew's on it, what am I going to feel? Water. Water. Ew, moisture. If I dropped the temperature in this room down to the dew point, you would start to feel moist. Your desks would start to kind of get wet. Things eventually would start, you know, water would start dripping off of the ceiling, right? We would have to get it down to the point at which dew forms. That's the dew point. That's the temperature that we bring this air down to 
so that water starts condensing out and sticking to things. That's dew point. Why is it important to understand dew when you reach the dew point? Clouds form. And there's not really like a template, um, a, a tool used to, you know, figure out the dew. Well, we can use a, we're going to use the hydrometer or a psychrometer, but I guess just a thermometer. Figure out the dew point. All right. And we're done. So that's just kind of a quick something something. Billy, you weren't here yesterday, so there's a whole sheet that I will go ahead and put this PowerPoint online for you, sweetie, on Canvas. The next thing that we're going to do, my beautiful people, we did that. We're going to do some ad demos. Because what is weather? Well, we know weather is located in the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is all around you. You are in the atmosphere right now. Rebecca, don't jeopardize your success. Atmosphere, we're in it. It is air. And so if we need to understand weather, we've got to understand the behaviors of air. So we're going to do some demonstrations. Because we're doing some demonstrations, I'm going to go ahead and put on my goggles. It says, what are the properties of air? How does air behave? How does it move? The following demonstration should help you answer these questions. I'd like to wait until Ravel comes in, but I don't think we're going to be able to. The first thing I want you to look at here is how this is set up. We're going to do a prediction, we're going to do an observation, and then we're going to try to do an explanation. So the prediction is the think about it, what's going to happen, see what happened, and then we're going to explain why it happened. So the first thing is, I'm going to take this paint stick. Does everybody know what a paint stick is for? Paint. Mixing. Mixing paint. It's wood. I'm not, it's not broken or anything. Look at it and make sure that it's just a regular piece of wood. Are there any breaks in here or perforations or anything like that? No, it's just a regular old paint stick. I am going to attempt to break this paint stick, this paint stick with nothing but air holding it down. Okay? Air and the mighty force of Mrs. McGrain's little muscles. So, I want you to tell me what you think is going to happen if I take this piece of paper and I put it down. By the way, this is an AVID application. I think AVID is a really good program. I think that you should join it. It will um, really help you be a better student. And um, I'm just saying, right, go to AVID. It's a good class. Is, does it take extra work? Yeah. Right? But all good things uh, take some work. So I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of paper down, and I'm going to attempt to break this stick with just a piece of paper holding it in place. Predict what do you think is going to happen. If you think the stick's going to go flying, Mrs. McGrain's going to cry out of embarrassment, fine. Write something down under the predictor. I always get nervous. And then by the end of the day, this is all in black and blue. I used to use sticks from Home Depot. Has anybody ever seen the paint sticks from Home Depot? It's like, a, it's like oak, it's like a tree or something. It's like, what are you trying to do to me? Break my little fingers? All right, so now let's go ahead and see if I can do it. I have got a piece of paper, and I have got a stick, and I have got the determination, the will. Don't think about it, just do it. Can we see through the, are yeah. we seeing it? Okay, I marks. Yes, it. Go. Oh, down on a dud. Let's try one more time. It flew through the air. Get another piece of paper. Ms. McGrain, you hesitated. Go for it. We were just waiting for Rebel to get back in. Rebel, we are going to attempt to break this stick with nothing else holding it down but a piece of paper. Okay, the marks. Yes, Go. Oh, I did it! Third time's a charm. Yay! The no, I broke it! I, I broke the stick in half. I have no idea what happened. Oh, you know, you're, you're oh my it. God, are you okay? Did it hit you? This is like the splash zone for Mrs. McGrain's like, so yay, I broke it. So um, if you want to say the observation, is that I broke the stick, that'd be great. I know the second one we did it, but I actually did, right? This day is powerful. Which way's the beach? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at uh, what it was that uh, happened. I can find my pen. There it is. 
All right, so we're going to talk about the why. Why did um, this happen? And I've lost my notes that I have, but that's okay. I've done this a bazillion times. All right, so first thing I need to know is what's the invisible force that was holding um, or pressing down on that, uh, not the paper, but what was pressing down on the paper? Gravity's pulling it down. I agree with you. So if I just have the stick like this, gravity is going to want to pull it down like this, right? And it's also going to push down on here. What's pushing down on the entire stick right now? Air. Now, the air only pushing down on this part of the stick, if I hit it, there's no way I'm going to break it. So what I did by adding that extra piece of paper is I increased the surface area and gave more push area for the air to hold down. You know what I'm saying? Increase the surface area. So rather than the air just trying to hold down this part, the air now is able to hold or push down on all of this, holding it in place. But air is nothing. What is air? Air. What is it? Gross. It's Water. gross? Gas. Oh, yeah, it's gas. Gross. And so gas is just um, atoms. And do atoms have mass? Yes, have you ever been outside and the wind has yeah. pushed you? Yes. Yes, because air has mass and so it can apply um, a force. So let's go ahead and uh, write that down. So air. What's our C? You what? What's our C? Whatever you saw. What? That was Alexandra. Alexandra. Don't Come on, little pen. There we go. Okay, so air, air is the, I want to say stuff, object, substance. Air is the object. Is more better than stuff. Yeah. Material. Oh, material's a good one. Material. No, it's not. Because of human, yes it is. You got my holy call. Air is the object that holds the paper down, so we break stick. I don't really want to say the and all of those little small words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Break. stick, and I'm going to label this stick, and I'm going to show that air, I'm going to put the piece of paper over it, air is holding that down. Air is holding that stick down. All right. Now, the reason that air can do this is because air can apply a force. Or I should say air can apply pressure, because we know what that word is right now. And pressure is just a force. I'll put that in parentheses. Now, why can it do this? Because B slash C, air, has mass. And so because air has mass, it can apply a force. Just like you have mass, you can apply a force. And you've experienced this, if you're driving down the road, um, you put your hand out and air pushes you back. It's, think about all those trillions of molecules that are just like pushing, pushing, pushing um, on your arm to push it back. So that is the powerful paint stick. Oops, I'm sorry, I didn't get my next demo ready. So we're going to go ahead and skip to the egg while we are heating this up. What I've got here for the can is I've got a little bit of water in here just so that I can see the vapor when it starts to rise. And I'm heating up this can. It's empty and open. Never, ever, ever, ever heat a closed can um, of soda. But I am heating, uh, it'll blow up. Yeah, it'll explode. But I am heating up an empty, open can, and we're gonna let that heat just for a little bit um, to let that one go. Yeah, what's up? Absolutely. The second demo I'm gonna do, though, is I'm going to do, uh, let's go right to the, what's up, Kato? 
Sure, yeah, go ahead because you're going to miss this, but hurry up. Um, the second thing we're going to do is egg magic. I am going to, with nothing more than the power of air, attempt to put an egg inside that flask. I am not going to, I wish these weren't flat on one side. I'm going to attempt to, oh, maybe that's why we wrote them in the water in the past. Mm. I'm going to attempt to put this on the flask and with nothing but the pressure of air, make that egg go inside. So here's how I'm going to do this. I am going to light a fire and I am going to put fire in there. So what do you think is going to um, happen? I'm going to light a fire, and I'm going to put fire in there, and hopefully egg will go into flask. What do you think? Oops, sorry. I got the egg egg will While you're waiting and thinking, you can also decide to come up and get an application for Avid. Have you just destroyed the papers? No, 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 I didn't destroy them. They've been enhanced with science. Are you an Avid? This is y'all teaching sugar Can I go now, baby? <laughs> It is a good program. All right. Do we have something down? Everybody got something? C. C. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Now, because I want to be safe, I'm going to hold this with some uh, crystal tongs. Boring. <laughs> That lit really well. It's not, it's not very well. Oh. Watch the fire there, girl. Oh, what happens if it. Yep, the end, I'm good. I mean. Oh! Okay, so the egg, what did we see? Right? Observations. Can that work though? The egg didn't like catch on egg? fire. It's a hard boiled egg. Oh. I told you. So it's a hard boiled egg. I'm going to go put some water in here. You write down what you saw. No. And then we'll talk about why it happened. Just to make sure the fire is out. What did you see that's nice. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. Poor egg. Poor egg. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to attempt to kind of draw the flask so we can have a little picture because Mrs. McGrain likes pictures. I know it doesn't quite look like a flask. I'm going to go ahead and put the egg that was on the top like that, and I will just um, label this egg so that we know it's an egg. All right, there um, is what we have. I don't like that I have those lines in between there, so that's got to go. Well, no, I guess that would, there, like that, that looks good. Okay, there we go. All right, so number one, we heated the air inside the flask. Heat, air, in, flask. Okay, when we heat the air in the flask, tell me about its density. It's very low density. Right. Low density. Now, air that is low density, is it going to rise or fall? Fall. Rise. Rising air. And so we have rising air and the air escapes the flask. It smells like fire. Because like the paper was lit, really? it was fire. Really? Mm -hmm. really? Real smart of you. Yeah. Okay. So if there is, if there is less, if the air rises and escapes the flask, tell me about the air inside the flask compared to the air outside of the flask. I'm going to say that one more time. It's warmer. Uh, tell me about the amount of air. Um, it was less. less. We have it now is. less air. Now tell me about low pressure or high pressure. Uh, low. Right. We have low pressure, or excuse me, pressure in here. I'm going to say low press. Low pressure in here. So then number two, the air on the inside is less. Air 
on in side equals less. This means there is less mass inside the bottle. And if there's less mass, there's going to be less push force. So it's a lower pressure. Now, lower pressure compared to outside the flask. There's less air, that means less mass, less ability to push, less pressure. Okay. Now, the universe likes things to be equal. Okay? It needs to be equal pressure. So we need equal pressure. If we need the pressure equalized, what do you think is going to happen to the air? The air inside has to be the same as the air outside. So what's the outside air going to try to do? Uh, yeah, it's going to try to get inside. It's going to try to push its way inside. But what's in the way? The eggs in the way. So air outside. I don't know, I was trying to... Air outside flask pushes egg in. It doesn't know it's pushing the egg in. It just needs to get inside, and the egg's in the way. So it pushes. Air always moves from high to low pressure. So since we have low pressure inside the flask, I'm going to put high pressure here. And I'm going to push down. And that's what happens there. Let's go back to our can. I'm going to move this up just a scotch. No shut ups. Let's see if I can hear it sizzling. It's sizzling. I think it's ready. Really? It is. So now, what we're going to be doing is I am going to attempt to crush this can oh with nothing but the power of air. Uh, okay. Let's, oh no, wait, we're not done. I've still got to get this out. Okay, how do I get the egg out for my next class? You put it over a sink and like, oh. ew. Okay, put that's it, not how I thought it. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Water. Instrument. More heat. No, no, no. More heat. More heat. I need to put heat where? Inside. Why? Inside. What am I needing? What do I need to create in here? Heat. What about the pressure? Low or high pressure? I need to have high pressure in here and low pressure out here so that the air will push the egg from areas of high pressure to low pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply air in here to hopefully be able to push it out. Blech. I don't know what head such a visceral reaction. Yeah. So, we yeah, created, a fire. We created a low pressure system. I think there's we a created. No, oh, it was on no, fire. No, it's just, it's fine. It's no, just no, the bottom was flaming. The bottom was flaming. The bottom was? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. cool. <laughs> so the bottom, excuse me, the um, inside the flask, we had a higher pressure, so it pushed out from high to low. All right, let's see if we can get this done. So what I'm going to do is I think it's hot enough now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's hot enough. You think so? I think you give it like two more. You should leave it on overnight. Oh, it's sizzling. Okay, so now let's see what we're going to do. Okay. It's just the extra burnt sugar and stuff. So we crushed a can with nothing but air. And we're going to use this same idea of high air pressure to low air pressure. Okay, so we're going to write this up. Always think of high air to low air. So even by looking at this, the air was wanting to go inside the can. So in my mind, where's the high pressure and where's the low pressure? High pressure is in the water. Uh, no, we're not, forget about the water. Uh, I turned that over to cool the air really ooh, quick inside. Wow. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let's talk about what it was and why um, it happened. 
Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this in half, um, Alex. So try to use half of this. Well, I'm just saying, how am I supposed to cook? I'm just telling you. Yep. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to talk about how we heated the can. So we heat the can. All right. When we heat the can, what happens to the air molecules inside the can? They get moving real fast. There you go, man. Air moves fast in can. So. Jerry, can we get a demo? Air. I did do the dance moves. Starts. I think we need her to do one. Moving faster in can. All right. So then, how is it changing in volume? Is it going to expand out or contract? It's going to expand. Yes. So the air expands. Air expands because what's going on with the density? It's more, it's fast, it's high, it's low. That is still open for you. What happens when something expands? If I've got like all of these, if I've got all these dots and they start to expand out away from each other, what happens to the density? They're sad dots now. If now it's like this. They're spread out, so is it a higher density or lower Low. density? Lower. lower density. Density goes down. Oh, dirty rotten. Wow. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Ken. No, right? Lock in. Lock in. Just not lock in. Density lock goes in. down. <laughs> density drops. All right. And so when this happens, the air rises, or air fills can. Like that better. Air fills the can. And I'm going to go ahead and try to draw that. It's like the air in the can gets big. If this is the air, it like fills every part and pushes on the sides of the can. So it's like pushing out on all sides. And if I was able to be like, probably like try to squeeze the can a little bit, even though it would burn my fingers, it would probably be like turgid. It would feel like it's hard for me to push in because the air is pushing out. Okay. Now, then we cool the can because I quickly turned it over inside um, the ice. The air particles now are not moving faster. What are they doing? Moving slower. Right. Air slows down. And I hate to say air, it's like the air particles. Air particles slow down, so they're no longer expanding. What are they doing the opposite? Contract. Right. They contract because the density is doing what? High. Right. The density increases. All of those air molecules get pulled to the center. So if this was the air in the can pushing out on all sides, the moment we cooled that air inside quickly, all of the air quickly contracted into the middle and left empty spaces all around that can. And the universe does not like empty spaces. It does not like um, a vacuum. So when it contracted, the air sinks to middle of can. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and try to draw that over here, showing that the can has been crushed. So the air pulls into the center. The outside air then pushes into that empty space that was left behind. We have high air pressure pushing in. So, outside air crushes can. It always moves from high pressure to low pressure. Same thing like if you are drinking out of a straw. So if we have soda and you have your straw, 
what you're doing is you're creating a low pressure system in this straw. So you've got low pressure in the straw by taking the air out. You're not sucking the uh, soda in. What's happening is the high air pressure is pushing down on this, which pushes it up into your straw. That's how it works. Same process of a vacuum cleaner. You're literally creating a vacuum or an empty space in, in that vacuum so that the outside air is pushing um, all the dirt in. Nothing sucks in science. Okay, I like that. So that's air. Are we good? Okay, turn it over and look at the back. So let's go ahead and talk about our conclusions. This is your homework for tonight. Um, do we not have any time to even answer a couple of them? No, no, no. We have one minute. Oh, okay. So your homework is tonight, and then uh, do a paper bridge. Also, you need two books and paper, and you're gonna blow underneath that bridge and see what happens. But this is your uh, homework for tonight. We'll go over that tomorrow, please. Thank you for shutting that off.